this is the day <laughs> that the Lord has made. I will, oh, you hear that? <laughs> Jamie, I don't know if they heard it. I say it so much, I don't know if they heard that part. I will, yeah, I, watch this, I will rejoice. Watch this, I'm using the word like, twice, watch this. I will, but I will, like I will will my way to rejoice. That despite what's going on, I will, I will, I will dig deep into my spirit and my soul, and I will my way through, through this. I will will myself to joy. So no matter what's going on, look, okay, listen to me. You're not a victim of your circumstance. You are a victor <laughs> of your circumstance. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, you're not a victim of your circumstance. You are a victor of your circumstance. And let me tell you the difference between two people. One individual will look at the problem and get overwhelmed by the problem. Another person will look at the promise and get overwhelmed by the promise. <laughs> Come on, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. You can focus on the problem and get overwhelmed, or you can focus on the promise and get overwhelmed. You say, how do you get overwhelmed by a promise? Because the Bible says, my cup runneth over. <laughs> my cup runneth over. And so promises will overtake you or a pro problem will overtake you. You have to decide which one. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? You got to decide which one. So here's what I decided to do. I want to start this message off a little different. Now, we're talking about education. We're talking about excellence. And we're talking about expressive, all right? Learning how to express yourself. We talked about last week expressing yourself verbally. And now we're going to look at another way that God is asking us to do it. But before we go there, I want to talk about the promise. Because look, in the promise, you can focus on the problem or you can focus on the pro promise in that promise. Watch, I'm going to show you. Watch God's promise. Watch this, y'all. All right. Now, watch what the word says, all right? And I want you to focus on the promise of this word and not the problem of this word. We got to practice, y'all. Repetition deepens the impression, all right? So we're going to keep practicing. Because of increased wickedness, that's the problem. The love of most will grow cold. That's the problem. We're seeing that right now, right? We're seeing people murder people. We're seeing that right now. We're, we're seeing a, a, a racism. We're seeing prejudice. We're seeing people who are homophobic. We're seeing people uh, try to hurt people because of what they believe. We're seeing people say, I don't believe what you believe, and I'm going to hurt you as a result of it, right? Not just that we don't share the same belief system, but because your belief system is different than my belief, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going I'm, I'm to say nasty things about you. I'm going to put posts up to try to deframe your character. I'm going to I'm try to slander you. I'm, I'm going to try to use words to tear you down. And in some instances, I'm going to do bodily harm, right? But watch this. But the one who stands firm till the end will be saved. That's a promise. There's a group that's going to wax cold, and there's a group that's going to stand firm. And they're going to be blessed, and they're going to be saved. Praise God. Let's go to the second one. I want to show you all. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it is yours. What's the problem? That we ask for things in prayer but, but the Lord says, you got to believe, okay, uh, you got to believe it. So what's the problem? I prayed about it and I ain't hear from God. You heard that one, Jamie. I prayed and God didn't answer my prayer. Is there a God? There must not be a God because I prayed. God says you got to do a couple things. You have to pray, meaning you have to ask, but then you have to believe. And when you believe, you will, re <laughs> and when you believe, you will receive and it will be yours. So y'all got to do me a favor. Before we get into the word, y'all got to do me a favor. Be overwhelmed by the promise. Keep, keep rehearsing the promise. The devil is going to whisper in your ear, kill the noise. Keep believing the promise. What is the promise as it relates to this particular series? The promise is if you get an education, if you get both knowledge and wisdom, if you operate with all your might, give 120%, grind, if you express yourself in the way that God 
will have you to express yourself, there are promises. There are things that are going to happen for you. And if you don't do it, there are things that's going to happen to you. So you make the decision if it happens to you or if it happens for you. It's really up to you. Praise God. All right, let's get ready. Let's go in the Word. Oh, I'm so excited. We're ending this series. Listen to me very closely. As we end this series, I'm promising you, I'm going to ask my team if they could do me a favor, and I want them to come up with an actual um, course to go along with these three things, or well, really four things that we mentioned, all right? I want us to do a course because while it's good to listen to me preach and it's good to go in the Word and it's good to pray about this stuff, I literally want to offer you a course so that you can go through it on your own with your family and have this sense of repetition so it can really stick and you can not only hear this Word, but you can do this Word. Because the power is not just in hearing, the power is in doing. Habakkuk 2 and 2. And then the Lord answered me and said, then the Lord, this is biblical, this comes from the Bible, this is, this is a promise of God, this is a path of God, this is a commandment from God, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who re <laughs> I don't know if you heard. Okay, so the first one, God told Moses to speak. Now God is saying in Habakkuk, write. Come on, I just want to show you all. This is the word of God. Moses, Aaron, speak. Now God is saying, write. I want you to write the vision, and I want you to make it plain. All right? I want you to put it on tablet. So what God is saying is that I'm going to give you a vision. I want to keep that vision alive. How do we keep that vision alive? How do we make it a living, breathing document? We're going to write it down on tablets. We're going to write it down on something that lasts forever. Why? So, so guess what's going to happen, Jamie? You're going to write the vision down. It's going to be a generation. And then what's going to happen is the next generation is going to get a hold of what you wrote down. <laughs> the next gen then a generation after that, and then a generation after that, and then a generation after that. And what's going to happen? When you write it down, they're going to be able to run with it. Can I say this? And I say this with all, all due respect. I don't want to disrespect anybody. But we've had generations where fathers haven't been in their children's lives, where mothers have not been in their children in their lives, and we've had families that have not told the stories. Oh, come on. Come on, y'all. This is why God, this is why the Bible was written. So we could take that Bible and read it generation after generation after generation. Why? So we could get promise after promise after promise and we wouldn't have to get it confused and we wouldn't have, because sometimes when people say stuff, you ever seen that telephone line where you got 10 people in the line, you start telling one person something and they tell the next person, tell the next person. By the time we get to the end, it's, it's all messed up. So God has said, I want you to write it down. I gave you the word, amen. What is the Bible? The Bible is God's spoken word written down on paper and ink, amen, binded by leather so we could pass it down from generation to generation. And I'm telling you, families have been messed up. Families have been messed up. I'm talking to you. I'm trying to tell you that the reason why the, the, the Jewish community is so prosperous is because they can go all the way back to Abraham. They can go all the way back to Abraham. They're, the Passover, uh, uh, Hanukkah, there are still traditions that they're keeping this, to this day. Why? Because I want to show you something in Joel real quick. I want to show you something in Joel because I want to show you what it looks like. It says in Habakkuk at the end that he may, be a, that he may run who reads it, right? I want to I wanna compare uh, uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. I read Joel 1, 2 to you before, but I want to go back and read it to you again, right? Hear this, you elders. Elders, write the vision, make it plain. This is why God is saying write it down because you're going to write it down. And the elders, those among us in the family who are older than the teenagers, the 20, we're going to pat. There, there, are, there is history, Jamie, that because my biological father wasn't in my life, there's history I never got, Jamie. There's history, amen. And the generation before that and the generation before that, they may have passed it down. I'm not 100% sure, but, but each generation is supposed to pat. I told my children a week or two ago, Jamie, for Father's Day, Jamie, for Father's Day, I pulled my children to the side and I shared with them our trust, Jamie. I shared with them books that I've written that, that it, in the event that I die, that they can take these books that are already published and begin to sell them to the world. 
There, there are video courses that I've done that I've not shared with the world. Jamie, I passed it down. There is video, Jamie, that I have that I'm speaking to, hallelujah, the, 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 Jamie, I've got, I hope video lasts, but there are messages that I put on video for the generations after me. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. I'm telling you the plan that God has given us. And so each generation can live off the other generation if we write it down. Joel 1 and 2 says, hear this, hear this you elders. Listen, all who live. Come on, Jamie. All of you who are alive, you got to, you got to write the vision. There's some writing you got to do. And you got to keep writing the vision. And you got to keep making it plain. For who? For him who reads it so he can run. Oh, come on. So he can run. Has anything like this ever happened in your days? Come on. Come, Jamie, there's some stuff happening in our day right now that we wouldn't believe that the stuff that we're seeing will happen right now. Or in the days of your ancestors, there's some stuff happening in 2020. There's some stuff happening in COVID-19. There's some stuff happening uh, with this uh, 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 civil and social unrest. It's some stuff that's happening with the, with the movements that are, the social movements that are happening right now. Why is he telling us to write it down? So you could tell it to your children. And then what else, Lord? And let your children tell it to their children. And what else, Lord? And let their children tell it to the next generation. <laughs> Come on, y'all, it's plain in the word. And the fact that our families have been, this is where we need to start. Like I hear a lot of people talking about the president and I hear a lot of people talking about the federal government and I hear people talking about the House and the Senate. You know where we need to start, Jamie? We need to start in the home. We need to start in the home. I'm challenging you. Fathers, get back in your children's life. I don't care what happened between you and their mama. I'm making it plain. Fathers, get back in your children's lives. Mamas, be present. Fathers who live in a home, but you're working all day and all night. You're not spending no time with your children. Mothers, you put your career first. There's nothing wrong with a career, but do me a favor. Write the vision. Make it plain. So what? So those who read it can run. And What does it mean? So they can get their education. So they can get a career. So they can buy a home. So they can live the dream. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So they can know God. They can pray in their homes. They can give their children the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Tell it to your children. Write it down on paper so they can tell it to their children. And then what, Jamie? And let their children tell it to their children. And then what else? And then their children to the next generation. It's the Bible, y'all. We've gotten away from the Word of God. We are spending so much time making money and building stuff that we're forgetting that we need to write the history down for each generation. Our family members are dying. We know we're all going to die. And unfortunately, everything goes to the ground with them. Write your family tree. Write your family tree. Spent. Then the Lord answered me and said, what does he say? Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that you might run, that he may run who reads it. It should be power in the stuff that you're writing down. It should be the history of your family. You should be talking about the strengths of your family. You should be writing all this stuff, all the testimonies. Jamie, each family should have a testimonial book. Go, go somewhere and write your testimony down so that your kids can have a testimony and they can learn how to write their testimony and then give it to the next generation. We have generations that are dying and you don't know who your grandma is. You don't know who your great-grandma is. You don't know who your grandfather is. You don't know who great your great-grandfather is. You don't have no history. We're not writing this stuff down. Write it down. Make it plain. What did your family do? What was their generation? Uh, Jamal taught us. My family, we got a family crest. Jamie, we put, I'm putting a family crest, Jamie, in the middle of the swimming pool. In the middle of the swimming pool is the family crest. I'm putting the family crest throughout the house. When the grandkids come, they're going to ask, what's that? That's the family crest. I'm going to write my testimony. I'm going to write. I've written books, but I got separate stuff that I've written 
just for my grandbabies so they'll know what their grandfather went through. I've done videos so that they can watch and, and, and I'm talking to them directly. But then they're gonna watch the videos that I've done throughout the world and they're gonna be able to tell about my character. They're gonna be able to tell what kind of person I was, what every interview I did, what every magazine article. We put the magazine articles to the side so they can read it, write it down, write it down so they can go back over to know their strengths and their weaknesses. They can know the mistakes that were made so they don't make the same mistakes. Write the vision, make it plain. Hallelujah. Come on, look at this. Come on, I want to show y'all this image, guys. Watch this image. Write the vision, make it plain. Write the vision, make it plain, y'all. Write the vision, make, write down your prayers and let your baby see the prayers that were answered. Are you hearing me, Jamie? Write the prayers, Jamie, so they can see the prayers that you pray and how those prayers were answered so they can see the miracles. Write down the barriers that happen and let them, oh, come on, y'all. Write the vision, make it plain. This is the second thing. Now, here's what's important, y'all. God is not asking you to do something that he himself didn't do. Come on, God, God literally wrote the Ten Commandments down so that they could go down from generation to generation to generation to generation. Why? Because if you keep these, uh, uh, if you keep these commandments, amen, you're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. You're going to be blessed by honoring your mother and your father. You're going to be blessed by not killing. What would happen if we lived in a society where people weren't murdering? Man, don't commit adultery. What if we didn't commit adultery? What if we didn't steal? What if we didn't bear false witness? What if we kept the Sabbath day? What if, what if we honored God and had no other gods before him? How, how would our lives be different? So they, Moses, write it down and then get it back in their hearts. God is not asking you to do something that he didn't do. God wrote stuff down, and he wrote it down so you would remember it. So he's asking you to write it down so your family remembers it. Take those pictures and keep those pictures. Show them what, they, uh, show them what their grandparents look like, their great-grandparents look like, their great-great-grandparents look like. Show them where they're from. Let them take trips to wherever they're from and, and, and walk on the soil that their ancestors walked on. God said, I'm going to write it down. All scripture is given for inspiration by God, and it's profitable for doctrine. Listen to me. This is why we write it down. It's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof. It's profitable for correction. It's profitable for instruction. Oh, come on. This is why we're writing it down. So when our babies get our prayer list, when our babies get our testimonies, when our babies get the word, when our babies get our history, what is it going to do for them? First, it's going to serve as doctrine. Then it's going to serve as reproof. And then it's going to serve as correction. And then it's going to serve for instruction in righteousness. You got so many babies out here that are making the same mistakes that have been made from generation to generation because generations are, are, are prideful and arrogant and, and shameful, Jamie. They don't want to write down their sins. They don't want to talk about their mistakes. They don't want to talk about the stuff they've overcome. So guess what you do when you don't have nothing in writing? You make every generation start over from scratch. You make everyone, and you wonder why the Jewish community is so successful, because they've written down their history. And even though they went through the Holocaust, they were able to bounce back. Why? Because they knew their history. You look at white America. The reason why white America is so successful is because they chart their history. They tell their history. They make statues of their history. They have pictures of their history. They have uh, written documents of their history. They have holidays where they share their, are oh, you hearing me? It's time for us, June, Juneteenth. It's time for us to share our history. It's time for us to share our history with our babies. That the man of God might be perfect. What happens when you write it down and you give people history, they're able to look at it. They're able to evaluate. They're able to make certain moves. They're able to do certain things. That they might become perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. They can build off of each generation. Praise God. Let's go to the next one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hear this, you elders. Listen, all you who live in the land, it's time to write. It's time to write, y'all. Write the vision. Make it plain. It's time to write, y'all. It's time to write. I'm going to go back to these images. Frederick Douglass wrote, I want all my parents to go read the, the books of Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass wrote, 
I, I want to make it plain to you who lived. They were alive in their generation, and guess what they did? They said nothing happened like what happened in these days and in the days of our ancestors. So you know what Frederick Douglass did? He wrote. Go read his, go read his writings. Get, buy his books so your babies can read his books, and then I want you to write like he wrote. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Frederick Douglass wrote. It's no coincidence that he could speak, that he could write. W.E.B. Du Bois, he wrote. Souls of the Black Folk, he wrote. He wrote, he wrote, he wrote. Booker T. Washington, he wrote. He wrote, y'all. I'm telling you, you can, you can read their writings. He wrote down what he did with a hundred things, with the peanut. He wrote, he wrote, he wrote. We got to write, y'all. We got to start writing. And for those of you who are a little, you feel inferior. You know, you feel like you're not a great writer. You don't really know how to spell, you know, like you, like you would like to spell. Do me a favor. Go get a recording device and tell your history and let somebody, and pay somebody to transcribe it. Come on, pay somebody to transcribe it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You just put it in a recorder. Go to your smartphone, push record. You just speak on a record. You send it to somebody, let that person type it, get it typed all out, get it organized, get it structured. And then when you die or if you want to have, you know, during your birthday or Father's Day or Christmas or Mother's Day, whenever, Thanksgiving, pull, Jamie, pull those writings out and start talking to your babies. Start sharing stuff with them. Oh, come on. I had, a, I had an incident uh, where uh, uh, somebody in my family, you know, Jamie was, I don't want to know, I don't want to use the word super upset, but, you know, they kind of, you know, was like, this ain't right. And they felt like they needed to correct that person. And my thing was absolutely correct them. But I want to know why don't, Jamie, why didn't they know in the first place? Why didn't they know in the first place? Why you got to correct them? Why? Because the history wasn't shared with them. The history wasn't shared. We got to share the history, y'all. Why? Because the Bible commands us to tell it to your children. Let your children tell it to their children. And let their children tell it to the next generation. Listen to me. We have nothing to tell if you don't write. We have nothing to share if you didn't write. We have nothing to share. So in the name of Jesus, you're standing right now. You're saying, God, I just want to be honest, God. I didn't write. I should have I written some stuff down. I didn't write. It's not too late. In the power of Jesus Christ, it's not too late to write. Go buy your pen. Go buy your pad. Go buy your recording device. And you write, and you write, and you write. And you tell the stories, the good, bad, and the ugly. You share, and then you share the, 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 the rationale or the principle you're trying to share in telling the story. And you get the pictures of your grandma and your great grandma and your great great. You go back as far as you can and you document it and you bring your family together and you share. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. We have not understood the power of the pen, the power of paper, Lord. We've not understood it, Lord. But this society was established because of the forefathers' written documents, Lord. Independence, Lord. The Fourth of July, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Columbus, Lord. This, this country was founded upon the pen. And there are certain rights that certain people have because of what was written. And there are certain rights that people don't have because of what was written. What was written was uh, the African-American was three-fifths of a man. And he was inferior, Lord. It was some stuff that was written. And so now, Father, we've got to write our own history. We've got to write the history that you wrote about all of us, and then we've got to write our own history. And we've got to share our history with our family. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, show yourself mighty, Father. Bring back the stories. Put them on paper for us, Lord. You take over the pen, Father. You inspire our hand. You help us to write and write and write and write and write the vision and make it plain so those that read can run with it. Forgive us for our sins, Lord, please. Have mercy upon us, Lord, according to our tender mercies. Blot out our transgressions. Bless our going out and our coming in. And Lord, we will continue to give you the praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We honor education. We honor excellence. And we honor the ability to express ourselves both verbally and in written form. And we now surrender these gifts to you. Help us to go hard, Lord. Help us to go hard and go heavy in these four areas. And help us to teach it to our children, that they may teach it to their children and their children. And the next generation, we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen.